Raven's Software is a developer of games on many different platforms, both PC and uh, consoles. We build everything that's in the game. We, we build the art, we build the levels, we build the, the sound and uh, music and things like that. The whole process in order to make a video game is uh, very multi-tiered. So we have motion capture, we have a cinematics department now that takes care of all the cinematics. The difficult part of this industry is you have so many creative forces you have to align up with sound, music, mocap, scanning. If you're going to go for uh, stylized, like photo surrealistic or photorealistic uh, motions, like a movie style adventure game or sports title, then you're going to want to use motion capture. If you had an animator that needed to do a photoreal walk cycle of a human, it would take hours, most likely it take days. But if you want to do a game that has hundreds or thousands of those motions, the best way to do it is to get somebody in a suit and motion capture them. Because we could take that same walk cycle and we could turn that around in uh, a few hours. The marker is um, a foam marker with a Velcro base and it's covered in Scotch Guard which is basically a reflective tape. When you shine a flashlight on them, they give you this just white hot one inch ball of light. We have 28 cameras. They're emitting uh, the red spectrum of light, infrared. There's actually a little black and white camera right in the middle. It starts out on a piece of paper and we say, okay, well we want this character to do this in the scene. Basically, you know, we'll, we'll look at it on paper and then decide how much we can capture, if we can capture it safely. On most cases, motion capture has uh, two different uses. One is uh, for cinematics. You can use it as a storytelling tool. The other half is more of a technical side, and that's for actual interactive play of driving the character. When a game is created, it's done in different parts and pieces. Um, and until the audio department gets involved in it, nothing you, you see on, on screen is going to make any, any sound. So whatever you're going to hear, we're responsible for that. Without any audio on it, we're looking at something like this, where we see a movie and we see characters moving and doing things in here. The character walking around in the world actually should have some footsteps. Some sound effects. The voices of characters, and finally, to give it a little mood and atmosphere, we need a music track behind it. I think the most awesome feeling is when you create something new that really didn't exist before. Whatever we're dreaming, whatever we're trying to envision, um, we just need to find the objects or the assets that will help us make it. We take scans of different objects within the real world and it allows our artists to have to build less on the computer. The types that we use are either structured light scanners or laser scanners. They go at um, a wavelength of 390 nanometers and it sends out patterns of light waves and the laser light goes out, comes back in and is received in the camera and then there's processing that goes on. To make the three-dimensional scan, we will take each separate scan and using the software overlay them and create one scan. We can do a face scan in 10 seconds time uh, to a complete scan of an object in uh, that's large, say, uh, automobile would take about two hours. For me, coming in and, and seeing new things created that have never existed before is my favorite part of my job. That's really what kind of uh, inspires me is I love working with other creative people on fun projects. I mean, that's what I get up in the morning and look forward to coming to work about. You have the most beautiful hair. <laughs> so I'm a video game addict. It's kind of what got me in trouble when I was younger. I probably play close to 15 hours a week. Maybe six to 10 hours a week. Or, you know, when I was in school, it was like, you know, four hours a day. I also still play Dungeons and Dragons on paper and pencil.